Hey, remember this guy? Driving around in his car, vlogging about, you know, surgery and having deep introspective thoughts about what it means to be a person and have major medical events affect your life. Then he's in the hospital and he's looking at stuff and making stupid remarks about what he's doing there because he's nervous and he wants to try and deflect all of that with humor. And then he's in the car and he's reflecting about what a ridiculous time it's been trying to get this basal cell carcinoma thing taken off of his face and again making light of things because now he has a giant scar on his face and he's concerned about it. Remember that guy? Well, if not, feel free to click down into the video description for the link to my pre-surgery basal cell carcinoma video. That was one year ago. It's been a year, so I want to take you guys through my recovery process a little bit, show you where uh, I'm at in terms of healing, and hopefully give you a better idea of what it's like to recover from this kind of surgery. So it should go without saying, but there's going to be some recovery photos in here. So if you're particularly sensitive to uh, scars or anything like that, you know, post-incision imagery, uh, maybe skip ahead a bit, but uh, let's get started. So as you may recall from the previous video, uh, I had a basal cell on my upper lip that they took out using Mohs surgery, um, got everything on the first pass, and then went in to do the reconstruction. Now, based on the location, the reconstruction ended up being particularly elaborate. Um, they had to take some tissue from below my lip and from above my lip and sort of twist it into place to fill the space that was left by the Mohs procedure. Um, they also had to cut inside of my lip a little bit in order to push the lip forward and suture it so that once everything healed up, it would look as normal as possible. Here's me immediately following the surgery looking just super pumped about the whole procedure. So here we are, post-surgery, day one, morning after, taking the bandages off, cleaning it out, taking a look. Uh, pretty gruesome, as one might expect, first day after surgery. Also very sore and quite tender, as you can imagine. Sleeping proved to be difficult for that first week or so. Speaking of which, when they tell you not to sleep on the same side as your incision, there's a reason for that. Things get very, very swollen, as you can see here. Uh, I learned that lesson very quickly. The doctors had also warned me that things would likely get a little worse before they got any better in terms of appearance, and over the next few days, things definitely started to bruise more, um, the inflammation was pretty bad, but eventually things started to mellow out. So here I am a week post-surgery, um, just doing a little smile test in the mirror to see where my range of motion was. It would be another month or so before I felt like I was speaking normally and could smile and talk in the way that I was used to. So it was 10 days before I could get my sutures out. Um, here's a shot right before heading in to uh, get those taken out. You can see the blue sutures there throughout. And then here is directly after having the stitches taken out. Um, that might have been the worst part of the entire experience for me. Um, they were pretty well embedded because the doctor wanted to give them longer to heal before taking them out. And so actually getting them removed was quite an ordeal. After having the stitches taken out, they went ahead and slapped these sweet little bandages on my face, which I used for maybe a couple of days. Um, here is my first legit shave following having these sutures removed, which was an incredible relief as it had been, you know, almost two weeks at that point since I had been able to shave fully without worrying about cutting my sutures. And then here's another quick smile test the next day just to sort of feel how things were healing up. And then a few days later as well, um, as things began to heal a little bit more. So it was at about this point that I really stopped doing daily documentation on the healing process simply because things were so gradual by then that it was hard to see any difference. But as we jump forward quickly here, a couple of months, this is sort of midsummer, how things looked, um, and it kind of looked this way for quite a while. So here we are a year later, um, and I'm really pleased with how things have healed. The only part of my incision that's still um, in process is probably just this little spot on my lip right underneath. They had to make those two additional incisions inside of my mouth and the skin on your lip just tends to heal much more slowly and differently than the rest of your, uh, your tissue on your face. And so the scar up here and the scar down here basically disappear most of the time. Uh, I very rarely notice it, and I've had plenty of people tell me that they wouldn't even know that I had surgery if I didn't tell them, which is really the goal. So huge shout out to 
the UVM Medical Center and Dr. Holmes there who did the surgery. I'm really grateful to them for going the extra mile to make sure that this looked as best as it possibly could after having to take such a significant amount of tissue from that spot. Um, thank you as well to everybody who has watched the previous video. I really appreciate all of the comments of support. Thanks to the folks who are sharing their story there about what they've been through or about to go through. Um, I really appreciate the fact that people seem to want to reach out and be willing to chat about what they're going through. And that was really the point of this, was to make sure that people had a place that they could see somebody who went through this in the same spot um, at a fairly young age and understand sort of how the process went. So thank you again. If you have any questions about anything that I've covered in this video or the previous video, please feel free to leave a comment. I'm happy to answer. And thanks for watching.